Welcome to Linked Up, Breaking Boundaries in Education, a podcast that focuses on what is happening in education today, connecting everyone to the movers and shakers that are breaking boundaries in the education arena. Welcome to Linked Up, Breaking Boundaries in Education, the podcast that brings practitioners and leaders and researchers and also big thinkers right to your device. We make it easy for you that way, don't we, Jerry? We sure do. And we love bringing you new ideas. And, and, you know, throughout our existence at Linked Up, we've been really focusing, obviously, on a lot that's been happening in the remote learning world. And today we're going to be talking about a solution um, with a platform that really brings a variety of educational uh, solutions to all of those who are in this environment. Oh, exactly. And it's it's a new way of thinking and a new way of doing business, which doesn't surprise me because our guest today, Bo McCoy, has quite an impressive resume. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that he has a new idea out there. Uh, he went to Dartmouth College and he worked as a software engineer And then he discovered that his true passion was education. He was a sales leader at GoGuardian, which was an ed tech startup. And I bet he was instrumental in getting that going. And now he is evangelizing personalized and adaptive learning to achieve his goal of equity for all. And he's the founder of Soul Academy. It's an out of the box educational resource. He's the CEO as well. And we are so happy to have Bo here. I wanted to add one more thing. He's an avid traveler and has spent two years backpacking through Africa and Latin America. I love that. So you have that global view as well. So welcome, Bo. We're so glad to have you here today. Thank you so much. And thank you for that very kind introduction. And thank you to anyone who's listening or watching this podcast. Oh, well, we're excited. But before we get started in finding out about Soul Academy, I love this logo that is on your screen. Does it have a symbol or does it symbolize something? It does. And yeah, it's actually a play on the name as well. So Soul, it stands for Simple Online Learning. Our concept was to make education really easy to do online. And Soul also means sun in Spanish. And what do you think about when you think of the sun? Well, it's the source of all life on this planet. And that's what I view education is to humans. It is the source for our growth and our expansion. So I went to our designer, the very talented Johnny Stevens, and I said, we want to be the nurturing of the sun. We want to bring that sun education to people all over the world. So I said, show me a logo of the sun being embraced. And so that's literally what it is. The colors in the sun, in the middle represent the sun, and it's literally inside of braces. So that is the meaning behind the Soul Academy logo. That's amazing. And it's kind of shining the light on equity in education too, shining the light on all students, not just some. I love that. I love that. Well, so can you explain what Soul Academy is and a little bit of the background and how you got started in this adventure? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, I absolutely found my calling. I, I heard the, the call to work in education, just kind of fell in it. Uh, when I started connecting with teachers and school leaders and just saw how passionate about what they were. And while I was never actually a classroom teacher, waking up every morning knowing that something I was doing would contribute in some way to millions of students' lives all around the country, while wow, I could never go and think about doing anything else at once I've seen that. And so as you mentioned in the intro, I had the opportunity to take some time and travel primarily through the developing nations on, on the planet. And what I realized was the difference between nations, it's really not people. Like people are the same no matter where they are. And also I believe in any era, like if you go back in time, people are people. What's different is the education that they receive because it opens up doors. Like we said in the beginning, it's that nurturing to provide opportunity to people. 
So when I came back to the United States and I was subjected to this enormous disparity between the higher socioeconomic classes and the lower socioeconomic classes, right where I was living in the city of Los Angeles, when COVID closed the schools, the difference in remote learning where I was living in Santa Monica and the schools where I was working in South LA was like going back to the third world countries. Like seriously, it was that, that drastic. So I looked around and I said, how can I contribute positively to bring this light right of education to the students who are now in the dark um, first here in the United States and then ultimately all around the world I believe that's my purpose while I'm still have time left in this body is to uplift the education to as many people as I can and so what I realized was there's a gap between what students are doing and what the education system is doing and I can help bridge that gap See, students are spending 12 to 15 hours every single day consuming media and playing video games. It's only when they go into the classroom that we take them out of that concept and try to have a, you know, a person to person conversation. Not that there's not a lot of value there, but we've got to recognize that their behavior has just shifted. And so I realized we could solve two problems by making short format educational videos and delivering it to students on their devices. Number one, we could meet them where they are with the behavior that they're already doing, which is watching video. And number two, we could solve the equity gap immediately because no matter what a student's background is, they can find a way to play Fortnite. They can find a way to do TikTok dances. So if they can find a way to do those two things, they can also find a way to improve their education. It's our job to just make the content and the resources available to them because this younger generation is so self-motivated, so autonomous. They grew up being in control of their time and their lives. We just got to give them the options that they need to make those choices that are educational. Oh, bringing all of that to kids is so powerful. The other piece that I think is powerful is the short. And I think that really makes a difference. Uh, I was working with some high school kids and they were like, just get to the point. Yes. <laughs> Their attention, this is another generational shift, right? So you and I and Jamie, we're used to watching a TV show, like say Seinfeld on Thursday at 9 p.m., right? And we would sit down and watch that for 90 minutes. And then the next day we would talk, hey, didn't you see, isn't Elaine so funny? But that's not the world that these children have grown up in. They've grown up in a YouTube world where they watch something for 30 seconds and they jump into to a game and they play that for a minute. Then they jump into Netflix, they watch that for five minutes. They're used to shifting context very, very fast. And it's not, better or worse, it's just different. So they will watch a 30 minute program, but they won't watch it 30 minutes at a time. They'll watch it two, three, four minute chunks mixed in with the other things that we're doing. And so that's why I encourage educators to take what they would normally do in an instruction and just split it up into small digestible bites so that they can mix it in with the rest of what they're doing. And if you don't believe that a student will jump from playing Fortnite or PUBG or TikTok to their science lesson, you're absolutely wrong. They 100% will. They told me that they will, and I've seen them do it. They'll sit down with their book and they'll jump around from their homework to you know enjoyment and back very, very quickly if we make it available to them. Right. I think we're starting to do that too as adults, starting to get that behavior. And we love the on-demand. I love, you know, finding things on demand when I need them just in time. And it sounds like this is what you're providing for students. Yeah, it's so true. I always say, and I, I just as you mentioned, Jerry, this, we as adults are starting to um, learn in these chunked ways. We, we, we leverage YouTube as well. Uh, we want things automatically. It doesn't we can't wait till it goes up to you know uh, up to the cloud and come back? We need immediacy as well. And I see that when I do workshops for teachers, they like things chunked too. They like to break up the time with um, different types of activities, moving from one to the next. Um, so we're seeing it in adults as well. But I always say for uh, students, the, your mini lesson, that time that they're interacting with content. Um, in any form uh, should be no longer in minutes than the students are in age, because that is their attention span. And I even recommend even less than that sometimes. So, uh, and then moving on to 
applying that information, putting it into real world practice. That's what they need to do. They need to see how that application is. And I love how your platform allows for that, Bo. Um, and, and I think it just with your passion, your innovation and your entrepreneurship, I think it's so exciting that you've been able to bring this for the, the equitable access to this content. So I think we can see how it certainly benefits students in many ways. Uh, and your website is gorgeous. Um, but you also highlight the fact that this is for creators slash teachers, uh, parents, school districts. How can all of these stakeholders leverage uh, your solution? Absolutely. Great question. Thank you so much. And thank you for the compliments. At the end of the day, we live to serve the creator. See, I believe teachers are creators. They are making beautiful pieces of art all the time. Do you know how hard it is to hold the attention of 30 teenagers for any length of time? That is an art in and of itself, let alone the lesson plans and the activities and all the fun things, the application of the material. There is real beauty inside of what teachers create every single day. And I believe that it should be appreciated and valued. And so that is the concept behind the ecosystem on Soul Academy. Teachers spend an inordinate amount of time creating their lesson plans and other supplementary materials to go along with their instruction. Why not get them together in a collaborative way so that if you're teaching a subject and I'm teaching a subject, we can work together to cut the amount of time that we spend creating those resources in half. And if we can get Sorry, I got excited. If we can get into a large group, we can cut that amount of time that we're spending creating content from 10 to 20 hours a week down to one hour a week. And so if we can get a whole lot of teachers who are teaching the same subjects into a large group, we can drastically reduce the amount of time that they're spending looking for content, creating content, so that they can focus on what's really important, which is building relationships with students, which is answering their questions, which is helping them connect what they've learned to other things and providing them the support that they need to continue in an autonomous way. So that's why our environment is all about sharing and collaboration. We invite teachers to share their video content as well as their classroom resources resources with their students, yes, but also with other teachers who are teaching the same thing. And it's not just in the United States. I'm working with teachers in Singapore, Malaysia, India, Bangladesh, Colombia, all over the world who are teaching the same math concepts, right? The same science, the same history, the same English. And so now we can make your life so much easier by taking all that time and allowing you to refocus it on what you truly love, which is interacting with your students. Yes. So I want to uh, build on that just a little bit. So when we are collaborating, we do so much better. So do you host all of the videos? So if if I had a great one this year, will it still be there next year for me? To Absolutely. You can think of it as your own personal content library. All the video content and all the classroom resources that you've ever made, you can upload it to Soul Academy and store it there for free. We're going to allow you to neatly organize it by the grade level, the subject, the topic, and the subtopic. And if you're teaching to a standard like Common Core or the Texas State Standards or whatever standard, you can also tag it with those standards. So the next year, when you go to teach that same lesson, you can find it in a matter of seconds. And you can also see what all of your colleagues have done and borrow from them if you like, or actually just use the content that they've created. So it's a huge time saver and efficiency gain. So as we work with creators from all over the world, something pops into my mind that is so important today, and that is culturally relevant materials. So now I can pull materials that are not just from a white woman's perspective, but I can pull materials from a variety of people. Are you um, pushing for culturally responsible content? And are you seeing some of that? Where are you going with that? Absolutely. So the, the genesis, like I mentioned, was these lower socioeconomic areas in Los Angeles. And guess what? Those students happen to be all African-American or Latinx American, right? And very few of their teachers were. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris very 
recently stated that if a black student has a black teacher by second grade, they're 17% more likely to go to college. And if they have two, they're 33% more likely to go to college. So the cultural responsive piece is huge for us. And so many teachers want to provide it. But how do you provide that content if you're not part of that culture? Well, you can come to Soul Academy and find teachers who are and connect the student with a teacher that they just respond to. Now, I even want to take it a step further. We know what the impact impact is if a black teacher or sorry a black student having a black teacher now what is the impact if a white student has that black teacher or an asian american student has that black teacher and what if it's a latinx teacher with an asian uh, student and just mix everyone and learn from everyone in this cross cultural international dynamic network of collaboration because i never had a teacher from bangladesh but let me tell you i just spoke to one and she is amazing and i want to learn from her and from teachers all over the world so i think we can really address not only the cultural responsiveness but just in in open mindedness and interconnectedness a oneness of humanity through education at an early age so that these students grow up understanding that people are people, no matter what they look like or what country they are on earth, I can learn from you. I can learn something from you. The pandemic has really shown us how we are just one village and, and we do need to get to know each other and understand each other. Sounds like a great bridge for teachers to do that and to pull that content. Wow. That's a, that's a gift in itself. A wonderful bridge, a great way to express and show and highlight diversity. Yet, just as you said, Jerry, we're still all one village. So learning from people from around the world um, and, and seeing different perspectives is such an important thing that we need in this world right now, globally. Uh, and it really is fantastic to leverage that uh, from your solution. Uh, another issue in our world right now is you know, the consideration that perhaps students have not been able to learn all that they were supposed to in this past year, right? So a lot of, you know, that we hear the term learning loss, but typically we hear the term learning loss over the summer, right? Usually the summer is learning loss because, or there is learning loss because um, students aren't in it. They are not in their education and sometimes some of their skills they have lost. This is a little different in these times because they never gained some of the content in order to actually lose it. So, you know, Jerry discovered from someone the term unfinished learning is probably a little bit uh, more relevant. But how does Soul Academy address that? How can people um, leverage the your solutions to hopefully get some of what they never got? Absolutely. Great question. So there has been a learning loss for the vast majority of students because of various reasons, right? They haven't been in school and, you know, a lot of, a lot of emotional trauma has contributed to that as well. So what can we do? Can we make the school year longer? Uh, can we make the school day longer? Can we require kids to come in on the weekends? I don't know how well those things are going to work. What we need to do is become more efficient with the time that we have and extend that learning time. See, live instruction is amazing. And it can really impact children, but it ends when that bell rings. When you combine asynchronous instruction, pre-recorded videos with your synchronous instruction, now you've extended the learning opportunity for that child in that day. And when they're eating dinner, they can be learning at the same time. And when they're in their bed on their phone doing instant messaging or whatever, they could also be learning. So you're, you're extending the period that they can learn beyond the traditional time box of school. And that's really the only way that we can help children to address that learning loss, because you can't make time longer, you've got to become more effective with your time. And this is the beauty of combining your synchronous instruction with asynchronous instruction. These kids know the situation that they're in, and they want to catch up to where they, they normally would have been without this learning loss. And so you, the educator, can put the tools, put the resources in their hands so that they can do it on their own time. And one beautiful thing about this learning loss is parents. Parents are aware. They are invested. They will put their time, their energy, and their treasure into addressing that learning loss where I don't know as much they would have without the pandemic. So this is a great 
opportunity, a great tool for us to combat that. We've got to lean on that parent community and bring them into what we're doing in the school to address the learning loss. And when we look at synchronous and asynchronous, the research is clear. If you blend the two, the learning excels. So that's wonderful. The other piece I love about it is I was a really shy kid in school. And if I didn't understand, I would never raise my hand and ask a question. But if it's on a video, I would, you know, rewind and listen again and again until I got that. And I'm sure there are a lot of kids that would like to hear that a couple of times. And so now that's in their hands to decide when they have mastered that. So I think that it's a very powerful tool. Yeah, for sure. And really that pause, rewind button is so important because students, whether they just missed it or they just need to hear it again. Jerry, it's so true that kids often, you have your 10% your who are comfortable raising their hand and asking questions. Um, some won't care, some aren't comfortable, um, but when they have it right there in their hands, uh, they have the ability to go back, listen again, uh, whether it's in that moment or it's later on. So the, the blending of the asynchronous and synchronous is, is huge. There's another side too. Yes, the content piece is amazing and you can digest that content by repeating it. But have you ever watched a video and just watched it again because you like the way someone said something? You've got that interpersonal connection as well. You might not even hear what the teacher is talking about, but you just like the smile they had on their face or something like that. It can really endear you and this bridging concept. It can really bridge you to those students who may be a little more introverted and not really have that interpersonal connection that, that you would like to have. Video is a great way of opening that door to them in a non-intrusive way, in a very kind of passive, calm way. And you'll be surprised. I've had so many teachers tell me, uh, Bo, you know, about 20% of my students were not engaged in my class before I started making videos. We didn't have any personal relationship. As soon as I put myself on camera and they could watch me on their time, we became friends, right? Those are his words. Yeah, the other thing I want to point out too is that as a parent, sometimes you're not really sure how, you know, for instance, math, how the teacher would like you to solve that problem. If the parent can look at the video too, they get a sense of what's going on. And I think parents are more involved now since the pandemic. And so it helps to refresh their memory as well. But I'm wondering about, do you have any students uh, creating videos because sometimes we learn best from our peers. So our, and would that be a possibility? Absolutely. Who better to teach a student than a student who just got an A on an exam? And another thing I'm really happy to share is this younger generation is incredibly altruistic incredibly communal. They get it. You know, the ones from Santa Monica, they want to help the ones from Crenshaw right? They are, they're there. We just need to create that bridge for them. So absolutely, if you're a student and you would like to help your fellow students, but also help teachers, tell them about your perspective on some topic that you just learned, because your opinions are just as valid, valid as the other teachers are, right? And yes, sometimes a, a message coming from an adult can be a little intimidating and maybe not that easily received. But when it comes from your peer and you're on that same exact level and stage of development in life, it's a little easier to be received. So if you want to help out and you want to contribute to, you know, just uplifting society through what you've learned, we invite you to put your content onto Soul Academy as well. I mean, kids should be creators, absolutely. And this allows them to have an audience and a purpose um, and to be innovative and creative. I mean, I've seen it in the classroom where a teacher tried to explain things two and three times, kids not getting it. And then another student just kind of stood up and just said, oh, remember in that movie, blah, 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 whatever. They know how to talk to each other. And then that Vygotsky aha moment went off. And then that was it. So we really need students to be the voice sometimes for sure. And I think, you know, a lot of this is it, we're, we're leveling the playing field for kids because they have this, a variety of different options um, to really 
absorb and connect with content, making it personal and making it more understandable. So these options are great. And it, it's so fantastic that it's all funneled in one easy place from you. That's the idea, you know, it's, it's the power of video. It empowers all these other wonderful things, you know, uh, as soon as you make that leap. And I want everyone to understand, we're all afraid of what we look like on camera. We're all afraid of how we sound. We all are afraid that we're not going to come across the way that we mean. We have to get through it. We've got to push through it because the benefits are so great. The learning loss, the collaboration, the, the culturally responsiveness, all these things are possible when you make that leap into becoming a creator. So we're here for you. We have a community. It's growing. You're more than welcome to join us on any of the social platforms. And there's plenty of teachers who are going through that same stage of the journey as you. You've got to get there. Just press that record button and start talking because people want to hear from you. There are, I tell people, there are students who are just like you were at 7, 12, 15, and 18. The exact same kind of personality, same quirkiness, same bizarre thoughts, whatever it is. There are people just like you all over the world and they need to hear from you and they need to see you most importantly. So they can internalize a vision of success that looks like them, right? You can plant that seed that I could become a teacher. I could become whatever it is because I see somebody who's like me and they're successful. Absolutely. Bo, my next question is, how do we find you? You said, join us on social media. What do we look for? Where can we find you? Yeah, I know absolutely. people are going to want to get in touch. So anyone is welcome to go to Soul Academy. It's S-O-L-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. You can sign up for the, for the website. It's all free to use. You can upload your content for free. Uh, I'm on Telegram. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, some other things that I can't remember at Soul Academy at sign S O L C A D E M Y. I'm very active on Clubhouse, and it is truly my biggest joy interacting with educators. I have such respect and admirance for what you do. You are artists, you are creators. It is my job to give you the platform that you truly deserve and also the value that you deserve, quite honestly. Um, I think teachers should be very well compensated for what you contribute to society. And it's my job to make that happen. So don't be shy. I am here and I always respond. I'm on this phone like 19 hours a day talking with educators. So please reach out. Well, I have to ask you one more question because we're doing a podcast on Clubhouse, um, how educators are using it. Can I ask you how you are using Clubhouse? Absolutely. I mean, Clubhouse has been really a, a, a gift, you know, a divine gift to me because I can communicate directly with teachers and they're hearing me and understanding I am a real person. This is not a marketing, you know, typing up all these crafted AI based words like, no, like this is who I am and you can resonate with that. So if you are trying to connect with an audience or for whatever reason, it just cuts out all the, you know, social media fluff, right? And just like to the real heart of who you are. So I love it and I'm on there and I would love to do a room with you if, if you'd like. Oh, we would love that. We would love that. We're trying, we're learning and we're just getting involved. So we're really excited to connect with you on there. That would be great. And you're right. It is the perfect platform for you because it is your passion that makes this project, I'm calling it a project, um, so um, explosive and, and exciting. So it's that passion, I think, in Clubhouse certainly can uh, reveal that for sure. And you have access to people all over the world that would be hard for you to have otherwise. So. So that's great. Well, Bo, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show today. We are excited about Soul Academy. And remember, it's like Soul Academy without the A, S O L. And remind us again what's the S O L? Simple online learning. Simple online learning. Nurturing like the sun. That's right. Well, thank you, Bo, for joining us. And um, I hope that you listeners will push the subscribe button and listen to Linked Up as we bring you innovative guests like Bo each week. Thank you so much, Jamie and Jerry. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to everyone who's listening to this. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And if you would like to stay linked up, 
Be sure to follow us on Apple and Spotify and subscribe to us on YouTube.